Hello. Uh, what we got today is we're going to play some Desert Heat. This is second edition Nations at War by uh, Lock and Load Publishing. And I'm going to set it up so I haven't you know, laid anything out yet. So this is just the box. So just let you know what we're going to play. I might not play the entire game. I'm hoping that maybe do a couple of turns uh, and then maybe come back, play a couple more turns. So, you know, just kind of stay tuned for that because if I do too much, I don't want to bore anybody too much. So let me get it set up and then we'll actually start rolling some dice. All right, so part of setup is going to be your scenario. This is probably scenario three out of the book, Rats in the Dust. So an Italian convoy of armor was on its way to reinforce a defensive line held down by beleaguered infantry. The hope was to arrive before they were overrun so as to reinforce until the bogged down artillery units could arrive in place to support. The seventh desert rats had penetrated one section of the line and was looking for unsuspecting targets on their way to the front. So this would be Italians versus the British Commonwealth. Uh, we're going to have the third Pistoia and the seventh armor. That's uh, who the Italians will be. And then the British Commonwealth will be the seventh desert rats with a few of their jeeps, I guess, with attached anti-tank guns that kind of look like jeeps. And then they'll have some support. Now, there are some special rules that can be in play here. The Italians have a special rule for their infantry. Uh, so there's a chance that if I had infantry, which I don't, then they have what's called, it's basically a rapid advance. We don't have any infantry, so the Italian special rule won't matter. Now the British have a couple. They have a headquarters rule, which is for the headquarters. Headquarter units that are destroyed in an attack and before the removal make a morale check. If passed, the headquarter unit is still removed as normal, but it's not reduced when it comes back. And then they have cruiser tanks, which is their, uh, at least the Crusader and Mark IV tanks get an additional movement point as long as they're moving into an open position that doesn't have like a ditch or anything anti-tank rack or uh, wire improvised, improved position. So there's a few penalties for that. Uh, can't use it if they're disrupted. And this is to all British Crusader and Mark IV tanks, which I do have some. So I'm gonna try and remember that that special rule is in effect if I need that. Plus then they have a little section of rules for the two pounder portees. They aren't necessarily, they don't have to be in command. If I remember right, those are, and I've seen pictures and you can kind of see a picture of it here. But that's what I think of when I'm thinking the, the desert rats. But this is like the British Special Forces. They're driving around in like these Jeeps with uh, like these big recoilless guns attached to it. It's kind of neat. But that's what I envision. All right. So that's the scenario that we're going to set up. All right. Now, it does also have some special scenario rules. It's just one map. That's why I picked it. One is just one map. So I don't have to lay out a huge map. Then it's got nine turns. I'm supposed to secretly record where the portees will set up, but since it's just me playing, I'm not going to worry about that. Also, the uh, Seventh Desert Rats don't activate when the portees get their unit specified activation. So the portees, from my understanding, the two pounder portees, they have a chance of going like twice a turn. And then at the start of the game, remove the third Pistoia formation marker from the cup. This formation activates first before any other unit. The formation marker returns to the cup as normal after why. The other rule I'm going to take out is dust. That's another module rule. So that British rule and the Italian rule, those are module specific rules for desert heat. There's also a rule in here on dust. The reason I'm taking dust out is since I'm new to the game, <laughs> I figured that's just one less thing to track because dust, not that it's a complicated rule, it's just trying to remember, see like right here, down here, dust, module specific rule. You put it in the cup and it says you add one dust marker per turn, but I've only got one dust marker in the game. So in my, my way of thinking is I put the dust marker in the cup. Then as I play each turn and I'm randomly pulling stuff, I could, I could pull dust. Then the game would be under the dust rules and it has some effects to shooting for AP and, and high explosive because you know uh, you can't place line of sight and some other rules then I throw that back in the cup and my understanding is dust is in effect until you would draw the dust chit again so it's possible that you might only have dust condition for one turn 
maybe two turns in a row, three turns in a row, or you might be lucky and never draw the dust again or never draw dust. So I think it's kind of a neat random element to add. I just know for me, I'll probably forget that dust is in effect and, and uh, you know, so just to keep things moving, we'll skip that. Otherwise, I think we've got most of the rules down. The other reason I wanted to go with this scenario is it does have uh, Blenheim, so I'll get an aircraft on turn two. I didn't have artillery. The tutorial game gives you some a couple of artillery. So yeah, there it is. I get two high explosive fire missions for the British along with a Blenheim, which is just like a really fancy type of airstrike. And then there's no support for the Italians except for fate points. Now fate points there's a chart that you can spend your fate points on, helps modify dice rolls, but I think we'll skip that. Only again, simply because it's a solo game, and I don't see the need for me wanting to modify dice rolls. Um, but if I were playing like a two-player game, then I would probably keep that in. I don't see chaos. I guess chaos isn't on here. Oh, put the chaos marker in the cup on turn two. Yeah, so we'll have chaos. So this is going to give us most of the rules that you need to play. Uh, and it'll just be a matter of remembering what all those different rules are. So we'll give it a shot. I'm going to set up, and then we'll start playing. Now that you know what we're setting up. All right, so this is going to be turn one. Turn one should be pretty short. Basically, what's going to happen is the Italians here with the third Pistoia. Let me see if I can just move this over a little bit. Okay, they're coming in on hex row A, or column A, and they're heading this way. And oh, basically what they're trying to do is get as much armor all the way across the board as possible. And that's what it says. So to win, the Italians must exit six armor units. Reduced units also count towards half of an armor unit via hex row U, which is the far map here, which you probably can't see very good here covered up by the book a little bit. So basically they're just trying to get all the way off the map board. And they start out with the third Pistoia on the map. And they actually already start with their uh, marker drawn. Now I've got my two pounder Porti units over here. They're right behind the city because this is where they could deploy between L and R for their initial deployment. And they would start hidden. Now, because it's single player, uh, normally it says you would just write down on like paper where they're hidden so your opponent doesn't know, but I'm going to start them there. My thought is I don't think these guys can move up into the city right away, but with my poor T's, I could probably pull them up into the city, get some defensive bonuses, and then they can start shooting. Now, because the third Pistoia is poor, uh, already pulled from the bag, that means in the bag I've got the two end markers and the unit designation marker for the port tees. So we can already start moving with these folks. And I don't have much line of sight through the city, but the range on these, these port tees are two, which means their extended range would be four. So these things are they're gonna have to get pretty close together in order to really make combat happen. And they have four hexes that they can move. So let's see if I go one, two, three, four. And again, blocking line of sight through the city. And I do get an attached AA, which is a, an 88 here. So they're gonna be pulling that for the moment. Now it does have a, a armored unit with it, but a separate truck is pulling the 88 and headquarters I put here I put the headquarters here because his command range of four meant he could activate everything safely so we're gonna move him up so let's see here one two three four uh, now as we get going that little rough patch is called a Hamada and it actually does cost one, two, four hard targets. Okay, so uh, one, two, three. We'll go here. Because it takes two movement points, so three movement points to get here. I can't move into the Hamada. 
One, two, three, four. We'll go around the Hamada. I don't know what Hamada is. <laughs> I'm guessing some kind of low, rocky type of ground because it gives a defensive bonus of one. All right, so there's the third Pistoia. They're just, we're blitzing. We're moving fast. Now, I'm going to reach into my bag here and try to shuffle this up a little bit. And we draw the intern. Now, there's only ten, two interns in the bag. So if I draw the second one, then the Portees won't get to go this turn. All right. And they draw the designated formation, and that's for the port tees. I hope that's not super blurry for you. I don't know if that's focusing or not, but designated formation. So I'm going to just set them off here to the side with the Pistoia. And like I said, I wanted to move them into town. For the train chart, it says town two movement points and they have four so I could go like uh, one two three which would give me a little bit of fighting and then one two three four that's not very good um, actually they could shoot oh one thing and I gotta remember this it's just so many markers I gotta remember I gotta put ops complete there just happens to be a whole bunch of units. I didn't even think about it. But technically, after that stack moves, I should probably do this. Because they're all done. All right. I need to remember to do that <laughs> going forward. Uh, so I did move these guys up. And actually, from where they're at, because inside this here, is that an orchard? Yeah, the orchards, they give some protection and uh, offer do offer some concealment. So if I wasn't shooting or anything like that, I could probably get the concealment bonus. But, oh, wait, we, we don't have range. See, uh, that's one thing, is going from, like, a squad level to platoon, since these are, I think the hexes are about 150 yards across, or 150 meters, and your weapon ranges then are going to be kind of short. On a tactical game, you know, I could probably shoot that distance, but it's a little bit different now. So that main gun has one, two, and then long range is four. So nobody is close. So what I could do is go one, two, and then pop myself up here in that city hex for protection. One, two for clear, and one, two in the city. And since I'm moving both units the same, they can do that. And because all these guys have ops complete, they're not going to shoot. All right, so that's both units. All that's left is a, an end turn marker. And so we would actually move on to the end, like the cleanup marker phase and whatnot. And we're going to get ready for turn two because now I get to bring on reinforcements. So that was nice. Everybody got to move. All right, so I'll work on reinforcements and then we'll take a look at the, the game sequence to make sure that's all we needed for that very first turn. With turn two starting up, I got a handful of markers I'm gonna drop in. So first we'll also be adding in the seventh Desert Rats, the seventh Armor from the Italians, we'll have the third Pistoia again, and this will be the designated unit for the Portees, the Chaos, finally, is going in. We're also adding the other intern, another intern, and I can add the Blenheim. Now, I was thinking about it. If I had put Lieutenant Cole up with the Port Tees, I potentially could have called for artillery at the start of this next turn. But in my mind, I was thinking of putting Lieutenant Cole in with the tanks as they make their uh, reinforcement draw and come onto the map. So, you know, I can't. Because I was like, wow, I could call for artillery now because artillery, you got to call with like a, a Ford Observer or one of your, your officers. So Lieutenant Cole will be coming in later so he can use those artillery strikes. Or I guess it's a headquarters unit. Never mind. 
Uh, but there's no headquarter unit with my poor T's, but there will be a headquarter unit with the tank. So I'll figure out where to stick Lieutenant Cole and then uh, my headquarters unit. I'll position them in such a way that maybe they can get a good line of sight to hit uh, some of this oncoming Italian armor. So let's go ahead and draw the first chit out of the bag here. Hopefully they're mixed up well. And we draw the designated formation. So that'll be the Portis here. And they're in a pretty good spot because they can shoot. I've got a good line of sight from here. It goes along this hex slightly out a little bit. So I can hit this unit here. But again, the range because four is their maximum. One, two, three, four. So they won't be shooting. But what they can do is if this unit comes up, oh, you know what? I put a reduced 88 cannon on it. I need to put full strength, sorry. So they'll wait maybe for opportunity fire as they come forward. This guy here though, one, two, three, four, he is in range and the headquarters is here. Now the nice thing is, as I was splitting to go around this Hamada, uh, his range of four still covers this guy. So they're still in range. So I want to try and shoot and possibly destroy this headquarters unit. Oof. What I should have done, I tried to spread my forces out, but now that I've started, I'm seeing that because that's the headquarters unit, I should have moved a second unit in there. I was just in my mind, I was thinking one unit per hex. But my headquarters don't yeah. learn from my rookie I, discoveries here. I should go ahead and put a second unit in there to try and keep the headquarters alive. So I'll do that as soon as they activate. I'll try and put another unit up here. So hopefully they'll survive. So we're going to shoot the two-pounder Portee. Now, the, the basics of combat are pretty simple. I've got four which is, well actually, yeah, four is the, oh, they can actually shoot. I was looking at four, two, six. Two is actually the firepower. Uh, so easy to make mistakes. Four is the range, that's the first number. So actually I could have shot already, but hey, we're in range now. Uh, but there's like a rule where if your range is underlined, then that's kind of like a fixed range. So you can't get your close assault, not close assault, but like short range bonus and you won't be able to get uh, long range, which would be shooting out to twice that listed distance. So they actually were in range. So this poor T is in range because four is the base range, two is long range. Uh, so maybe they will shoot. We're just gonna shoot this poor T unit first. Now you don't add attacks together. It's, it's gonna be, you attack, each vehicle in your stack will attack. But what I'm going to do, and I, I think you could probably do this, I think it's legal, is since both of those are the exact same unit, and they have the exact same firepower, and all the bonuses are the same, I'm just going to roll both of their attack dice together. And their target, you cannot target the headquarters unit, so I'm going to go ahead and shoot at this L640 tank here. Uh... I guess maybe you are supposed to roll the attacks individually because now that I think about it, it's because if, if all four of these hit, technically they hit, but your armor, the armor defense, the way the game is set up is, as I think that would be overwhelming the armor value. So we'll say, you know, one of these tanks or one of these portees will attack, then the other portee, because they don't, you don't stack attacks. And I guess that would make sense. Uh, so we'll say the, the I have one poor T unit. Again, I got two dice, and they hit on six because they have a subscript of six next to the two. Both miss. All right, so that's a miss. And then the second poor T unit in that stack gets one hit, so that's six. Now, the defense is one die, and it saves on a five plus but it's got the headquarters unit and the headquarters unit is a two let me double check and see if that headquarters unit if that gets to i don't think that adds to the armor check i think that's like to the attack and then they get to use the morale of the leader uh so he's just going to make one die roll there's one hit and if it's a five plus the armor saves Ooh, 
and it rolled a six. So the armor for that unit saved. So it didn't take a hit. And as far as I know, I don't have to check for the leader. I think only if there's a hit and damage that you would have to roll to see if that headquarters unit takes any kind of damage. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, if they get a disruption or a reduction, then you can check the headquarters. So the port T, both of those fired. So we'll put ops complete on them. That didn't work out. Not in their favor today. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm just looking here. Now, the other thing, too, is I, I didn't discuss some of the steps. Because this is just starting out, when you do a new turn, you remove all the ops complete. I don't have to check for command stats because the portees, again, are like an independent unit. I didn't have to do any rallies. And I got no fire missions because there's not like a leader formation there. And then I'm, I went right to basically performing operations. I'm going to look something up real quick, so I'll be right back. I just want to make sure that these guys can even shoot at extended range because I think it adds one. Because there are four, two, six. So I think at extended range, they, when fighting extended range, you, the, the, the hit number is increased by one. If the unmodified to hit number is six, reduce the firepower by one instead. Because they have, they hit on sixes, so I can't raise that to a seven, so I reduce the firepower by one. So they would be rolling one die to hit on a six to see if they hit at this top unit. So we're going to take two shots because that puts them at five. One, two, three, four, five. That's long range. Probably what would be smarter is just to wait till they come closer because technically they're supposed to be waiting in ambush. These folks might not really know they're there. Well, they probably would know after we moved. But yeah, let's, let's wait. This worked because they were in a good range. They weren't at long range. So we'll wait till the Italians advance. Okay, so with that in mind, we'll draw here. What's next in the bag? Now, there is an Overwatch rule. I think I could put them on Overwatch, which then I might be able to use them later. Let me look up Overwatch real quick. Okay, so I just double checked and it looks like Overwatch is if you advance cautiously. They're not moving then I might be able to give them a concealed bonus because they're here, they haven't moved. And I was hoping I've got conceal the conceal rules on one of these charts. That's just another one thing to remember because there's a list of requirements for concealment. And, you know, the, I'll tell you while I'm looking this up, not that this is a super complicated game, it's just that there's, like any game, there's a few things to try and remember that you can do, and then remembering it and I think you know once you do it a couple times you kind of remember what it takes to be concealed and I just want to find that real quick conceal conceal because there's opportunity fire line of sights where are we at I guess I should put this is where I would put the rules or put the recording here on pause for a second to let you know that I remembered I could do concealment because they're in a city and now I just got to find the concealment which I did on page 18 of the rule book just real fast as long as I'm not under ops complete I'm not moving I'm not adjacent to a good order enemy unit I'm not within line of sight and within four hexes of a good order enemy recon unit I can actually give them a concealment marker which there's a few in the game and that way I'll remember he's concealed, which gives like another a little bonus to be shot. <laughs> Makes him a little tougher. So I'm going to put concealment on those guys. Then as soon as they do op fire or something like that, they'll lose the concealment. But right now, they're hiding. Okay, that's what I can do. All right. So next we'll draw third Pistoia again. And we'll start here. So we're just coming up. Now, once they move here, I'm going to do the opportunity fire because that puts them at range four, which is what I need. So there goes that concealment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good job. Put that concealment and then use it right away. 
so again, we've got a firepower two, that's two dice. It is a range of four, so it's not extended range. And then, you know, again, you could wait until maybe these guys are two away, which would then give me a uh, plus one to hit. It'd still only be a firepower two, but it would make my odds of hitting just a little bit better. But from a two to a six, probably not worth it. So we'll go ahead and hit them here. And plus their range was three. They could shoot back, but it'd be extended range. So they're going to move up closer to shoot. So this is fine. I think we're okay. So the British... Okay, the first Porty hits one of his rolls as a six, and the Italian armor, again, is one five, so one dice. He rolls a three. So that first hit is going to put a disruption on them, so they're disrupted. They're not reduced or anything like that, but now that they've been disrupted, they halt in place, so they're not moving the rest of the way, or be able to shoot or anything like that. Uh, plus, because it's third Pistoia, uh, you know, again, I just kind of went right to the, the orders because everybody was within command radius of his four, and there was no need to rally any units or anything like that. So we just went right to operations. But since he's done, uh, I'm just going to kind of go down the line here. Oh, we still have one more poor T. And they missed. So I'm going to mark that stack of poor tees, they're used up. Uh, now if I come down the row here, since we do see people there, I'm gonna deploy the 88. Now the 88 does not move, it has to have the truck. When you deploy a vehicle, or like a, your infantry, you subtract three from the movement to whichever side you flip on, because that, that takes the time to load, unload kind of a thing. And the 88 gun cannot move. So he's deployed because we're going to try and shoot into those city hexes and take those guys out. So they're now deployed. I'm going to stick them on the bottom. So they're done. I guess I could put an ops complete. I think that you can shoot. I don't think these guys can shoot. I think uh, it would pretty much just be infantry that could disembark and then possibly shoot. I don't think that applies for the 88 because uh, the 88, you know, that takes time to set up. Uh, so what we'll do is put the ops complete there. And since I'm kind of looking at this stack, this tank has a range of three, one, two, three. Uh, it would be long range to hit, which would also only give the really bad firepower. So what they'll do, we're going to move. Uh, so even if you move and shoot, that's going to, yeah, that's, uh, that's not going to make him very effective. Their ops complete, so they can't be shot at anymore by them. Uh, yeah, let's, let's move up then. We'll just move up. One, two, three. And then hopefully we can start to pound on some of those Jeeps. We'll give him an ops complete. So we're going to start moving some vehicles up. Uh, like I said, I'm going to reinforce this group here. One, two, three. We're going to move maybe here. And then one, two, three. They have a movement of four. One, two, three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this guy here. He was one hex back. Then I'll move this tank unit and the leader up here. That way I've got several things ready to just pour it into that little city hex right there. So we'll do that for them. Now, next time I activate, I want to make sure I'm in range of everything. One, two, three. He's good. One, two, three, four. He's good. But let's move these folks up. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four because I should be getting some British units on the map here in a second. So let's move some equipment up. Perfect, okay, good. Oh, put the ops complete. I can tell me I have to pop out a lot more ops complete markers here in a moment. Excellent. Portees are good, third Pistoia, and next item from the bag is the Desert Rats. Excellent. 
they get to come on the board. Now, the Desert Rats also activate the Portees, and since the Portees have Ops Complete, we're going to take the Ops Complete. They don't have, you know, range of command or anything like that. Uh, so the Desert Rat portion of my troop, which is the Crusaders, yeah, a couple Matildas and some Crusaders, Lieutenant Cole and their headquarters unit, we'll place them on the board. I'll get them on the board and then we'll start playing with them. We've got the British, they come in on column U, so that's the far edge of the map board. And there's not as many reinforcements as I was hoping, because it seems like the Italians are going to get a whole bunch of tanks here in just a moment. So they're going to move this way. Now I put the headquarters unit in with a couple of the Crusaders, and I put Lieutenant Cole with one of my Crusader platoons, because that seems like that's a slightly better tank. Uh, but looking at the stats, it's like the Matilda rolls three dice for armor, three, five. Yeah, the Crusader is two, six. So actually, the Matilda has much better armor. But the Crusader seems to have a better gun. So, man, yeah, it would be nice if they had an in-between tank that's got the better gun and the better armor. But that's the way it goes. Now, these guys here on the road. Now, it says for the road movement, you just move one hex per road like that allows you to negate the terrain that that the road goes through and they're starting on a road so with uh, five movement I could move one two three four five plus since that is my crusader the crusader gets one extra movement point if it moves into clear terrain because that's their na nationality bonus now they're not gonna move and shoot we gotta get up here first so I might move along the road one two three four five and that would put it here, six, with that extra point of movement for the Crusader tank. Now, I've got the leader with them. My hope was the leader would be able to help with attack rolls because they get to add, like, two dice to the attack roll. So that might help when they get to shoot. Currently, they cannot shoot because they moved. They moved all their movement. So there's an Ops Complete. And we're going to need some more Ops Complete here. So I'll punch those real fast. Ops, 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 Ops. And a couple more for good measure. Two more for good luck. Now the Matildas, ah, their movement is really, really slow. Goodness gracious. One, two. There's a price for all that armor. It weighs them down. And I've got a stack of two Matildas up here. So those... These Matildas have got to go. One, two. And their ops complete. And then uh, the Lieutenant Cole and his Crusaders. That's a movement of five, but if they move in an open space, they get to add that extra movement point. So one, two, three, four, five, uh, six. I'm going to move them here. So the road doesn't do too much in the desert. <laughs> The road is just like a road. Uh, what gives them that bonus is that nationality benefit of, of moving an extra spot. Great. So there they are, side by side. Now the Portees, they activate because they, they activate with the 7th Desert Rats. And now we've got some target selections. We're going to shoot up here because we want to see if we can take out these guys. We'll give that a shot. Uh, but again, it's range four, which is what they are. That's two firepower. They hit on sixes. Okay, one misses. The other Porti misses both shots. That was two fives. Yeah, not very accurate. Now, this guy, on the other hand, he's got some options because people have moved up on him. So they're going to shoot down here because that's the stack with the leader. And we'll see if we can cause some trouble there. Now, because there's now short range, if they get to two hexes or less, that short range, uh, I get to add basically my, my to hit number drops by one. So I'm going to roll two dice and I'm hitting on fives. Okay, so that didn't hit. And one and three. So again, shots fired, no hits. So we'll put another done. Kind of a shame. All right, let's see what we got now. So that's all the British. That leaves the intern. I put the Blenheim in because it's turn two. Also, Chaos is in here. So what do we draw? Ah, 
The Italian 7th Armor is now on the board. Yay! So let me get those units and put them out. All right. The 7th Italian Armor is on the board. They have to start on column A. And I thought what I would do is put them down here in the bottom and just let them race along that southern edge. Now I know the British are down there, so I could have put them on the north. Uh, but I've got the poor T units there. Not that they're going to do much, but I figure what I can do is I'm just going to push. You know, just really kind of overload the southern, even though that's where the British are. I think we could probably push through. So they have a movement of three with their tanks. It's still not much. But it's gonna get us some. It's gonna get us moving. So we're just gonna move these. Uh, one, two, one, two, three, and just kind of put on some ops complete. And we're gonna move uh, one, two, three. Again, moving the stack, and nothing is even close to being in range for opportunity fire. Nothing in Opportunity Fire anyway, it's all got Ops Complete on it. One, two, three. And one, two, three. Let me pop one more Ops Complete. Excellent. All right. Uh, my understanding of the rules is once all the units have been activated, that's the end of a turn. Uh, so what we can do now is get ready for turn three. Wow. So we clear off all the, the mark. I leave the disrupted, but all of the ops complete come off because it's now going to be a whole new turn. The blend I'm is still in the bag. The chaos is still in the bag. All the units activated. So the, the Portis did both Italian units, both British units activated. So I don't have to hold out an end turn marker. I didn't even use the end turn markers this time. So we'll take these off. So this is probably the only tedious part. Uh, any game where you gotta do this, it's like, ugh. Okay, let me pull all these little moved or fired or whatever markers. I know I'm sure some games have it worse, but there we go. Clean map board, ready for the next turn. We're gonna stick these back in the bag. Yay, all right, let's do, a, let's do a turn three. Okay, that's shaken up. First is in turn. Fantastic. Let's grab next. This is the designated formation. So Portis again. Again, kind of going down the checklist of things to do on your turn, which is on your handy dandy uh, player sheet. So we do the unit marker removal. Uh, just in case people are curious, my understanding is you know, when you get that whole new turn and you remove all the markers, the reason why you would remove markers then on reactivating a unit is because if, if let's say the Italians went and I did opportunity fire with my poor T's, then when the poor T's actually get activated, then you would pull that off. Um, because there's a certain amount of time that passes from when they do that, that uh, say, the opportunity fire to where they activate. Uh, so this just kind of keeps units in the game a lot more, a little more interactivity than just say, oh, you opportunity fired and now you're done the entire game. So I, I like that. That's not too bad. Your lieutenants and squad leaders and people are out there motivating people, getting them to act. So I would remove the unit formation marker. Check for command status. Portees are good. I don't have any rallies to do. I don't have any fire missions to do with them. Uh, or now, now we can move on to operations. So again, it's all about shooting. Now I do have right here some guys that are close and, and to keep them from moving into the city, which they could have done. Uh, well, they don't think it had enough movement point. I'm gonna move this Jeep forward or this Porty Ford and he's gonna opportunity fire. So he's gonna move and fire and that'll be the stack. Now, a couple things can happen here. They move, because that's what they're gonna do as a group. Now you still roll them individually, but I'm just moving them as the group. Now, the Italian who is here can now opportunity fire. Since they moved, that's what he wants to do. He's like, oh, here they come. 
I'm going to try and maybe disrupt one of those portees to keep it from shooting. Now I look here, he's got a range of three, half of that, so he's going to get a bonus to hit of, of one. So essentially he now becomes a 2-5 unit instead of a 2-6. So we're going to roll two dice. Ah, uh, one hit. So the tank gets one hit and it's going to, uh, it hits one of these guys. They don't have any armor save to roll for except for uh, what they get on the terrain chart. Terrain chart will tell me how many dice they get to roll because they're a soft unit. Town. Defensive bonus, two for soft target. Now, uh, there's also a rule. Uh, let me let me check, because see, that's another thing to remember is now it's all soft targets, so if they're being, if it's all soft targets being assaulted by armor in a town, there's like a bonus and things for that too. Or it could just be for close assault. But let me double check on that, because again, it's just those little rules that I haven't quite memorized yet that I, I want to make sure I'm getting right. So I'll be right back. All right, so I was checking, and it's just on assault. All right, so um, that tank is going to shoot in there at the infantry. It's not an assault, and that means the defender gets to roll for the uh, terrain chart there. And, well now I gotta check something else real quick. Oh, it's a five. So now that they're in there, uh, they're gonna roll two dice because they're in a city and they save, if I'm reading this correctly, they save on a five or better. Yep, for the defensive bonus of the train. Okay, cool. So being in a city is actually really good for the infantry. So let's do this. And nope, two threes. All right, so that was only one hit. So that's going to disrupt one of the portees. Oh, let's put a disruption on him. All right, so he's not going to get to shoot. I'm just going to say it's on the bottom one here. So he is now disrupted. I couldn't move, and he's not going to get to shoot. But now my portee is here, and he gets to shoot. And it's that whole penalty thing where you add one to the to hit, but since he has a seven move and fire yeah decrease the AP or fire or oh, decrease the AP or HC firepower by one and then increase the hit by one well I can't increase the to hit number by one all right let me double check make sure I got that right all right well this is where I get to ask the community then uh, what would you do Right now it says if you move and shoot, you move and then you would decrease your firepower by one and increase your to hit by one. Now the to hit for this portee is already a six. So if I increase that by one, I would be at a seven. So in my mind, they can't move and shoot. That big old recoilless gun is not designed for that. And that kind of makes sense. That's what I'm gonna go with. I don't know if anybody would say, you know, uh, since that is six, you can't increase that, so you would just stay at a six. In my mind, I'm just going to go with six plus one is seven. I can't roll a seven on a die six. So technically, that is not a move and shoot vehicle. Uh, in fact, a lot of these then, some of these are going to be, you can't move and shoot. And that's fine. I think that's pretty fair, and that's what I'm going to go with. So basically, that poor T... I just simply moved. <laughs> Done. All right. Don't have to debate that. Now, these guys, on the other hand, they are in range. They're going to go ahead and attack the headquarters unit again. Now, they get a plus one to hit. So, they now have firepower two. And it's they're hitting on fives. So, one poor T shoots in there. That's two hits. Uh, it is armored. They are armored. They get one at five. All right, so we're going to pick one of the, the tanks here. Uh, we'll, we'll, it doesn't say when you hit. I guess it's attached to the headquarters will be attached here. Let me see if it says it doesn't matter which headquarters unit is hit. Headquarters should not be targeted directly if a unit fires at a hex containing an X. And if it fires at a hex containing a headquarter and the result is a disruption or reduction, 
the headquarter must conduct a check. So it doesn't say if it's attached to a specific platoon, like a lieutenant or some kind of leader. It says if a unit fires at a hex. So I don't have to target a specific platoon to try and hit the headquarters. So having two units in here, I don't know if putting the headquarters, it, it, it should help, it should help. Uh, but anyway, I get one save on a five plus. All right, so that means one of these guys is getting disrupted and reduced. Now the leader gets a check or the headquarters unit. Oh wait, it was two hits, so we know what that means is actually because they're supposed to spread the heat, the heat, spread the heat evenly, spread the hits evenly. That means both of these get disrupted. And you know what? Just to make it interesting, because that's two ch two hits that happened in there, I'm going to make the headquarter guy make two checks. It says on a roll of one, something bad happens to the headquarters. All right, nothing bad happened to the headquarters because I rolled a three and a six. Now I have one more porty in there, which is two six, and both of those miss. So that stack will get marked with ops complete. This unit of tanks, then since both of them are disrupted, I'll just put one disrupt on all of it. The leader was not reduced in any way because uh, they don't have a reduced side. The headquarters are pretty much that's that, so you don't want to lose them. Right? They don't have a reduced side, I don't think. I think they just go straight down to... I guess they get disrupted, maybe? So if you hit a headquarter, let's just check that real quick. Yeah, on a... It's re oh, it does get reduced. So if, if that headquarter was hit, it would flip and then flip it to its reduced side. And then if it was already reduced, you eliminate the headquarters. So headquarters cannot be disrupted. Like I'm reading the rules and not showing you. So that's important to know. So I can reduce them, but they don't necessarily get uh, disrupted. All right, cool. That is the poor team. All right, see, the thing is, as you learn a game, all the pieces start to fit together. We're learning together. Good vibes. Oh, we draw Seventh Desert Rats. All right, so again, in the spirit of how I understand the game, the Seventh Rats also activates the Portees. So the Portees, we get to go again. Now, I think one of my Portees was disrupted, though. Yep. Uh, so we will actually get to make a morale check. But I have to see what the morale for the poor T's because they don't have a morale listed. Let me double check that. Oh, you know, I just thought of it. Since they're they're attached, so since they are attached to the um, desert rats, I'm gonna give them the morale of the desert rats. So the morale check then should be simple enough. Just roll two dice, roll under, and we should be good to go. Uh, yeah, roll two dice six. Now it says modifiers. There's probably modifiers for like being in town. I don't know if that's on the, let's see, chart, concealment. Yeah, let's see what kind of modifiers for morale roll we have here. Okay, I'm looking and basically it just says that for the rally, as if you're out of command, you add one to your morale check and you're going to base the morale roll on your unit formation and if you're in the same hex as a formation leader you can subtract the headquarters leadership from the dice roll uh, so the poor T's they're just on their own so they're gonna roll a seven which is what I see for the desert rats uh, so six so that means they clear their disruption and they're good to go and again uh, no uh, I could probably do now that I've got some folks in range here, I could probably try and drop a barrage of artillery fire. I think we'll try that. We'll do that before we get in and do all these other operations. All right, artillery seems simple enough, so I'm gonna take my barrage marker. I'm actually gonna drop it right here. 
and it says on a roll of, you roll a die six, on a roll of one, then the mission was ineffective, and on a two through six, it hits. So that's very accurate artillery, I'm gonna say. And I rolled, I rolled a one. So it, it says that was ineffective. Well, there goes that artillery strike. And I'm assuming I lose it. I didn't think I would roll a one, but I did. And I just want to check to see if that just means it doesn't happen or do I lose it too. Yeah, let's see, on a roll of one, the fire mission is ineffective and does not impact the map. So we'll say we fired it and there you go, we're down one. So I only had two artilleries. Now it does say that you can make two artillery attacks as the first action of your headquarters unit or recon or a sub headquarter. I was just gonna do the one because I figured that one would be enough. So we'll, we'll save that next one that I have. And then we get to do desert rats. So again, we're gonna do some shooting here. These guys up here will now shoot because they moved up. They survived opportunity fire and they're good to go. Uh, so they get two, they hit on fives, and they're attacking here. So that's one hit. Now he's got armor of one, five. He's in the open, so one, five. Oh, he survives. So then the other portee in that stack shoots. That's one hit. And again, one, five on the armor. And that time he doesn't save. So that should be a disruption. And that stack is good. This poor T unit is going to... Oh, there's already a disrupted unit in there. So they're going to do the same thing. Two dice on fives. Miss. The other poor T, two dice on fives. One hit. So the tank unit. Let's see, on a one five. They survived. They dropped a hit. So we're pretty good there. Uh, since we're just right there. Is it any time that that is targeted that we have to roll for the leader or only if they're actually hit? Yeah, only if there's a disruption or, or reduction. Alright, so that's good. Those are done. Now we've got ranges here. There's Cole. He would add one to his attack roll. Uh, these guys have a range of five. One, two, three, four. Oh, they're so close. Looks like we've got Hamada, Hamada. So I have to think about maneuvering. We're going to move up one. And these guys can actually do move and shoot. So they're going to move up one. And I'm attached to this top platoon. So I'm just going to put them out like this. Now they have to add one to their to hit, which puts them at a... A six. Yeah, I think that's all they got to add. Let's double check on that. Yeah, that's it. So they they subtract one from the firepower. So they have a firepower of three on those. So that's going to be two dice, and they add one to hit. So they're going to roll on two sixes. Uh, so they're going to be shooting. I'm going to shoot from this hex here. Here. So we're going to split fire. I'm going to have one tank unit shoot here and the other tank unit shoot there. So the first tank unit with the lieutenant, and he has got a, a morale of one or leadership of one, so it says he's going to add one to his roll here. Oh, good. That turns that five into a six. That's one potential hit. They save on a, a one or a five, one dice, armor of five. So they get disrupted. And then, same thing, two dice hitting on sixes, but they don't have a lieutenant to give a bonus, so it's gotta be a natural six. Nothing happened there. And that stack will now get ops complete. And this is my headquarters unit. And they're, they are crusaders as well, so uh, let's see, that, that might be in the way. If I come straight across, they can shoot here, but are they in range? One, two, three, four, five, six. You know, just being at long range, I don't have to move. I could just accept the fact they're at long range and add one to there to hit. Uh, and then one of these units would get the leadership bonus, 
which is two dice to their roll. Yeah, let's just do that. Let's stay put with them. Uh, okay, so this guy's going to get three dice, but he hits on sixes. And they're going to shoot. We're just going to put all the shots into this bottom unit. Okay, so no, no hits there. Uh, but now, this leadership is two, so if I remember right, I know, I could look in the book, but I'm just going to go off my, my memory. Headquarters gets to add two to the firepower. That's what I remember reading from earlier. So we go, oh, nice. That's devastating. There's actually two hits there, uh, which means on a roll of one five, <laughs> I get one dice roll, and that's uh, five to negate one of those. All right, so he is also just disrupted. I'm knocking my stacks over. Here you go, disrupted. Great. So that stack is done. So we'll just put a big old ops complete on them as well. But I still got two more units. And that's the slow Matildas coming up. And they've only got a movement of two. One, two. And they're not shooting anybody. Their gun has a, has a shorter range. But we're going to come... One, two. You can do it, Matilda. Alright, let's reach into the bag. Nice. That's the second in turn. All right, that means we actually do have two units in the bag. That's the seventh armor and the, th oh, that's both Italian units. Okay, so what we do is the Italian player is gonna hold one in turn marker out. And that means everything goes back in. What's gonna happen is the Italian player will put that in turn marker back in once both Italian units have activated. That way the system makes it so that you might have one turn where you have one or in this case two units that don't activate, but you'll never go two turns without activating something, right? So you might go where you have like if you had three units in the bag and one didn't go, then at least that next turn everything goes. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of fair. It's okay. It gives that little bit of fog of war what's happening. But since it's a new turn, we'll leave those disruptions on. All the ops complete come off. But we leave all the disruptions on. That means we've got some units that we'll be making morale checks here shortly. I'm just knocking all these stacks around. Time to get me some good industrial strength gaming tweezers. There's an ops complete just floating around out there. Great. Well, we'll make this we'll make this the last turn. That way we can get every try to get everything activated at least once. So I leave that in turn out, all the ops complete are off. Everything is back in the bag. Let's see if we get a chaos this time. All right, here is the seventh armor, so they get to go. Uh, they didn't go last turn because they were deciding what to do. Uh, so now they would check to see, they don't have any fire missions. Uh, then we would check to see uh, command status. We would do marker removal, command status, fire missions, no rallies. So we'll go right into operations. And we're racing across the bottom of the map here. So they get a movement of three. One, two, three. And one, two, three. One, two, three. All of it's a three. And one, two, three. Okay, they're racing across the desert. So we go complete, complete, complete. Complete. Now, technically, because these British have a range of five, eight, they they could opportunity fire. They could, and then when they activate, their ops complete would come off. So that's almost like free shooting right there. Yeah. Do I want to do that? 
technically, because I didn't declare that while my opponent, me, was moving, I'm going to take that as a learning opportunity and plan that out better. As you can see, playing solo, I haven't quite got this down yet. Uh, so we'll say that they, the 7th armor has finished. So the Italians are done. They're done. Next out of the bag. Oh, British. Designated formation. So now the, the Portis are going for it. Uh, once again, they they would remove any markers. They don't have any. They would check for command stats. They're fine because they're, they're a special rule. They don't have any fire missions because they're not leaders. And uh, no rally. So here we go. We're going to start shooting. Since we do have a disrupted unit in here, this stack is going to shoot down here. So again, they're, they're two dice, but they're hitting on fives. That's one hit. The armor, I know, is one five. Ah, so another one of them is disrupted. So I'm going to put a disrupted on it. Now, because we disrupted somebody, we're going to check to see if it's if the headquarters is affected. Because uh, on a roll of one, they get reduced. On a two through six, the headquarters is fine. Headquarters is fine. Then we put ops complete on the stack. This stack is going to shoot down next to them. So the first port he goes. Again, two sixes because of close range. Nope. And then the second port he goes. N no. Oh, wait. Yes. Fives. They hit on five because you get that plus one to hit. Uh, so I may have had, I forgot what I rolled the previous one. Someone could go back and say, oh yeah, you did have at least a five. Uh, but that is a hit here. They're already reduced, uh, but he does have armor of one five. Nope. Armor does not help. So again, another tank round, anti-tank round slams into the tank, reducing it. So they are disrupted and reduced. Another good hit like that, and they are out of the fight. Okay, so British designated unit is done. They get ops complete. And then we've got uh, third Pistoia. Now, now, because the last Italian unit has been activated that missed that before, their intern marker, I'm going to stick that back in the bag right now before I forget. But now that the Italians have gone, uh, end markers are good to go. Uh, so that's the third Pistoia. <sighs> they have a range of four. That means everything is in range and they get to make morale checks. Their morale is terrible. It's only a five. So I, I don't know how terrible that is, but it's not as good as the seven that the British have. Also, uh, the, actually, well, what's good is the units here in the stack of the headquarters, they get to subtract two from their roll. But the rest of these yahoos got to make it on a five. All right, so let's do that. There was all, oh, if they're out of command range, they get minus, they get a penalty to their morale check. All right, so let's start over here. This guy needs a five. Oops, he does not pass morale. So he is still disrupted. This guy here, five. They are no longer disrupted, but they are still reduced. Then, I keep knocking all my stacks. We'll go here. This guy, five. He is fine. This guy, not. He's still disrupted. Then in the stack, I've got two disrupted units in the stacks. So we'll say um, they get subtract two from the roll. Okay, so one of them is fixed. And then only one of them gets the disrupted and we'll just pick one so the headquarters that's actually nice if you're there with the headquarters all right so keep them alive boys now what are they going to do this 88 is going to shoot in at the portees because it's soft a soft target oh you know what i did earlier when i had the tank shoot the portee i forgot there's actually soft, there's a high explosive attack value uh, that I should use. I was using their AP values to attack. So if anybody caught that earlier, 
or didn't catch it, well, you know, now you know. Uh, so the 88 is going to shoot because we deployed it. It has a range of 9. What I need to do, what I should have done was taken my 88 gun and deployed it down here to cover the whole southern half of the map. Right now, it's kind of in a wasted spot because it's up here shooting. But that's okay because if I can maybe kill that off, then we can flip this to its ported side and start driving it out somewhere else. Uh, so what we'll do, look at the high explosive factor, which is 8. And he's going to shoot here into uh, the town. So that's two fire or two dice, and his firepower hits on four pluses. So let's see how many hits we get. One. Now the city gives you two dice, and you save on five ups. So that means the infantry do not make any saves. So one of them, one of those uh, trucks, will get a disruption. I'll put that on the bottom unit. Bomb unit is disrupted. Both of them are ops complete. 88 gun. Ops complete. He did his job. Now we're doing the rest of 3rd Pistoia. This reduced tank unit is going to also shoot into the Portis. Again, using his high explosive factor. But because he is kind of wounded, it, he only gets one die. But because he's short range, well... <laughs> Uh, his he only has range of one with that half of that would be yeah I don't think he gets the half range bonus because it says to get half range you take your value divided by two round down Which means he would have to be in the same hex, which is now an assault. I guess he could assault, but he's gonna shoot But he will get a uh, hit on a five so one dice five up he hits Okay, the guys in town they get two dice in town because they're infantry and the save number is five up Another reduce or another uh, disrupted. So now both of the poor T trucks are disrupted. They'll have to make morale checks later on. All right. So another ops complete. Yep. Okay. Uh, now this unit here, they have just the one unit. Again, it's going to add two dice because it gets a uh, headquarter modifier. So again, it's soft target. I don't remember that soft target. So actually, he only gets to roll three dice, and he hits on fives because, well, actually, again, he's at short range, so he's only hitting on sixes because half of one would be zero. So their high explosive factor isn't that super great. All right, but he hits on fives. That's one hit into the town. And again, soft targets in town, two dice, save on five ups. Ooh, he doesn't. So that's a disrupted infantry. So we're going to stick that. I keep calling it infantry, but it's this truck unit. That's a soft target. And now they get mark ops complete. And this is also 3rd Pistoia. Their range is 3 for hard target. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's long range, but they're going to... They... What is it at long range? They add 1 to the to hit, and if they can't, then they subtract 1 from the firepower. So it's going to roll 1 dice on a 6 plus to hit. Nope. So that doesn't work. All right. Third Pistoia is done. Okay, let's see what's in the bag. In turn, that's the first in turn. Well, this might, well, we'll see how this goes. There's still a Blenheim in here and a Chaos. Ah, that's the other British. That's Desert Rats. Uh, since the Portees are considered part of the Desert Rats, they take their Ops Complete off because they're now activated. 
Uh, there was one, well, both of those are disrupted. So they're gonna make their morale check of seven. So one of them passes, and the other one rolls a five as well. So they both pass. So that's the rally check. Oh, before we rally, I should do the, the next barrage. This will be the last barrage that I have. So here's the barrage marker. Technically, I should have... Well, that's actually last. So you do your command status. They're good. Uh, command range here, five. All of this is in command. And then we're going to do... We did the rally. And now we're going to do fire mission. I'm going to drop the fire. I'm going to drop it here. So that's line of sight from the headquarters unit to here. That way, if I hit, I potentially will hit a couple squares. Uh, so I roll one through six. One is a wasted shot. Two through six means it lands. Oh, well, three. That just means I just took out a whole bunch of Italian armor. Sorry about that. But that means the barrage hits. Now you make your attack per hex, not per unit. So we're going to see how many hits and then what the defense is. So first of all, what was the power of my infantry, artillery, shooting power here? Rats in the dust we're playing. It's a 3-4, so it's going to roll three dice with uh, hitting on fours. So I'm going to start with this top guy. Wow, that's three hits. Now the nice thing about artillery is you can't destroy, so I can disrupt everything in there. I just can't actually, I think I can reduce, I just can't kill. Let's see. Artillery I think can reduce at least. Which is fine. If I Even if it doesn't destroy anything, just the fact that I get to reduce stuff is fine. I'll take it. Yeah, all units must receive one hit before I receive any two, and so on. Resolve against an HQ if there's one there. Uh, I was looking to see, it's in here somewhere. Well, I don't remember where it says that. Well, I'm pretty sure somewhere I read that the artillery doesn't destroy vehicles, so it can reduce them. All right, so without having to dig through all of that, that's what I'm going with, is artillery reduces, but it doesn't destroy. But that's three hits either way, and there's two, two in here. Now, what you do is you look at your terrain, and you see what the infantry modifier uh, defensive bonus and it said if there's a hard target add one so when you're in the open though because that's what they are they're in the open there's no defensive bonus but because they're a hard target they add one die so they're gonna get to roll one die because they're tanks and they save on a five plus I don't know if you can see it I rolled a three so that means all three hits uh, so that means one they would go disrupted, disrupt, because you apply equally, and then uh, disrupt, disrupt, and then one is reduced. So remember, even though artillery doesn't kill, it did good. That was a very good effective artillery strike there. Okay, this next one. Same thing. Now we've got to check to see how many hit. So it's a 3-4, so roll three dice. And once again, three hits. Now... Just move some stuff so I can see. That was an ops complete guy. I got to put their ops complete back on them, which was right here. Uh, again, that's got the headquarters. So that headquarters unit might get screwed up pretty bad because that's so far three hits. And again, they get one die roll to save because they're a hard target. And they do. So now that's two hits. So that would mean both of those are disrupted. Now we're going to check for the headquarters unit. That's two hits, uh, any roll of one is going to reduce them. Oh, the headquarters unit got reduced. Uh, I would flip it, and that's now it's reduced side. And then, both of those are disrupted. 
So again, that was a super, super good artillery strike. Oh, man. And then this guy here, because it's adjacent. Uh, mortar, they say, is pretty much the same, except it's the one hex it lands in. But uh, artillery hits all the adjacent. All right, so we got three dice to roll. We hit on four plus. And again, I just knocked that stack all over the place. That's only one hit. And they get to save one die on a five up, and they don't save. So one of those is going to get the disrupt, and we'll put that on this bottom one. Way to go, artillery. But now they have no more artillery. The Blenheim is still in the draw bag. I'm pretty sure. I just pulled him out, yeah. I still got Chaos, I still got the Blenheim. I just haven't been able to draw it yet. All right, but artillery is good. That means now I have the rest of the Desert Rats to go. Now they were, they had moved and shot earlier, but they're actually in range now. One, two, three, four, five. So they are gonna shoot. And that Lieutenant Cole is attached to that top unit there. So we'll start with, uh, we're going to shoot here. Lieutenant Cole is going to shoot here. The other tank will shoot here. I, I don't think you have to call all of it right now. Just in my mind, that's what I'm doing. Because you roll one unit at a time. So I could like shoot with them. If nothing happens, I could then say, okay, well, this guy will shoot here too. I'm just going to spread the fire. Spread the love. Uh, so now they got their lieutenant. They add one of their hits. They're actually going to hit on their dice roll. So in a way, they're hitting on four pluses, which is nice. And they roll three firepower dice. Yep, that's all three hits. Beautiful. So if I'm lucky, I'm okay with that other platoon shooting down at the other guy. So this guy's disrupted. And he's only got armor of one five. He's dead. Even if I save, which I don't, that's three hits. He's gone. This is already disrupted, so I'd be reduced, and then he's gone. I gotta put a mark, a wrecked marker. So I have to find a wreck marker. Let me find a wreck marker. Okay, we've got wreck. So technically, that's not like one burning vehicle. That's platoon worth of destroyed armor spread throughout that hex, but it will provide some cover and some movement penalties and stuff like that. So we'll probably try and drive around the wreck since that's on the outer edge. That shouldn't be too much of a trouble. Um, but now that was that was that Lieutenant Cole guy, so he's good. This tank was gonna shoot down here, and he's got himself again three dice hitting on fives because there's no lieutenant with them, and that's one hit. They have armor one five. They don't they don't make the armor check. So he gets disrupted. Oh, I took their ops complete off for some reason. Because they're ops complete after all of that. And you get a disrupt. Markers are good, but yeah, mark keeping track of all the markers is actually kind of useful. <laughs> I know who's done what. But I seem to be missing some. Oh, because some of my ops complete are now disrupted. Okay, so now I've got some more British down here. What, were, what was his range? One, two, three, four, five, six. I th think, you know, he can go... Since they got long range, he's, I'm going to shoot down here. Because that would be... He's got a five, but his long range would be out to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we'll do that. That means he'll roll three dice, but he's hitting on sixes. Uh, so we'll go with one one guy there. First tank unit. Okay, they score one hit. Uh, they have the headquarters. The headquarters will shoot with the second vehicle. That'll give them a couple more dice to roll with. That's always good to have. All right, so there's one, but they get the defense of one. Oh, they, oh these are the heavier tanks. They got a 2-6 for armor. And they did not save. So one of those is now disrupted. I might need a second game. I might. I feel like I'm running out of disrupted markers. I might need more. I think, are there any more on the back? 
I feel like I might be running out of disrupted and ops complete markers. Okay, so we've got one guy who's disrupted, one tank fired. This other tank with the attached headquarters will roll and they get to add some firepower. Hitting on fives, that's two hits. The Italian armor rolls two dice six for armor. Two saves, nice. All right, so they say, bring it on. British guy, I couldn't think of a, whatever they called the British back then. Bring it on, you blimey, uh, I don't know, bring it on, red coat. Then we've got a single Matilda. They have a range of four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's got a long range distance to here, and their firepower is already at 2.6. I'd drop his firepower to 1. That's not very good. But they're going to do it because we're about to end the game. So he's going to roll one shot, and it's a hit! And then those are the weaker tanks, and they roll on 1.5. Do they say no? So there's some more damage. Oh, this only had one tank in it. Uh, so he's going to get reduced. So he's disrupted and reduced now. Nice. Oh, this is looking up. I don't know. Oh, no. We just caused a big crash here. I figured it out. Don't worry. I got it. I can quickly look at the video camera. Oh, we're good. <laughs> that thing just slid right off the top of the box. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Look at there. No harm, no foul. No foul, no harm. He's good. This guy is going to move two. One, two. Now, stacking limits apply at all time, even when moving, so they're going to have to move around. And we get one more ops complete. Whew. Good. I was getting nervous because I'm running out of ops complete. Did I do the rat or the poor tease? I thought I did. Yeah, I think I did. So they should get ops complete as well. Usually they're the first people I do something with. I think they went. Okay, that's, that's everybody. All right, well... We'll call it there, because this is a rather lengthy video. What I want to do, this, consider this kind of like a first time run through for me. So I've been playing little bits here and there to get some of the basic rules down, but this is the first time really, really getting like a full game on. A lot of times what I'll do is just put a few things down and have them move around. But this is really like my first time of, of trying to, you know, put together as many of the rules as possible. So this is a good learning experience for me. Now, if you're new to the game, I hope you get to kind of look at the rules because the rules are available online. So you can kind of play along with me a little bit and maybe catch some mistakes. And if you're a veteran player, then yeah, I definitely hope that you are catching some mistakes and maybe share that in the comments. But otherwise, the game is a lot easier than I make it seem like. Because again, it's you know trying to make sure I get all the rules correct. I'm I'm filming this. I'm trying to you know play a solo game, try to share some thoughts and make sure I catch rules. But generally, there's going to be a mistake or two. So I'm hoping that you know I'm, I'll come back. I don't know if it will be this scenario, but I want to grab another scenario and play it, and then hopefully it will flow a lot better. But the chip pull system is good. The basics are just fine with, you know, your, your combat, you know, your strength. Uh, the mistakes purely were just me making a couple mistakes, like always using AP. And then I remembered, oh, wait, they have their high explosive firepower. I should be using that. Uh, but I think we've got the gist of it, right? We tried some artillery. We've got, I've got the Blenheim in the bag. I just didn't draw it because I wanted to try the airstrike. Same with the chaos. I wanted to pull a chaos chit at some point, but it's only third turn and there's like nine. So there's plenty of opportunities to pull that. But we did get to do where we had our both of our intern markers come out and we got to keep both Italian units out. So it's not that difficult to track 
which units you have to wait on before you can put your intern back in. Uh, you know, so all in all, it's it's not a complicated game. Now, next time maybe Fate will add in Fate, but it's just that when I'm playing a solo game, the more the more I thought about it is I just didn't see the value in trying to use die roll modifiers or buy different Fate stuff as a single player game. Maybe we'll throw that in next time. It's just for me that that's really a strong point for the face to face game because then you can throw a surprise on your opponent, but it's me, so I can't really surprise myself. Uh, maybe I could. Maybe I could just roll on the chart. I don't know. I don't know if I can assign numbers to something and just randomly buy a fate action. Uh, I could try something like that. But I think the game otherwise runs pretty good. I like chip pull. That is what helps it run as a single player game. Like when you play solo, because you're never quite sure who's going to activate. So instead of saying, I'm going to run all of these people a certain way and then run all of this guy a certain way, I like the chip pull because, you know, you don't know who's going to come up. And when they come up, then you don't know who's coming after. So it's really hard to play biased. It really lets you kind of play that particular unit to its fullest. And that's what I like is you're playing that unit. So even in a face-to-face -face game, you know, there might be a, a time, a stretch, where your opponent is activating all his stuff just by the way the chip pull works, but it's not overwhelming for that one player because it is kind of one unit at a time. Take a breath, grab the next thing, and go, oh, okay, so it's my other Italian unit. Sometimes you get lucky and it alternates back and forth. But I also like the fact that when a whole new turn starts, you pull off all the markers, and then if you had an opportunity fire or something like that, when you activate that unit in that turn, then you pull off all the ops complete markers and they can kind of go again. So if you are lucky with the chip pull, then it feels like you might have a unit that does quite a bit in one turn. So I, I think it has a pretty good flow to the game. So I definitely want to play again, but this is just the first run at it. I know it's kind of lengthy, but if you watch this all the way through, I know some people like the lengthy play, so I appreciate you watching it, but definitely uh, go ahead and leave some thoughts on maybe mistakes or anything like that. Or if you enjoyed something, please let me know, and I'll see about coming back and playing. I don't want to play the same scenario again because we just did the first three turns of this one. You know, Maybe we'll do it again and just take it further because it will go faster. Uh, but you can let me know your thoughts if you care. You know, If you want to see a different scenario, let me know. If you want to see this one again, but it'll go quicker, you can, whatever works. But otherwise, I will talk to you all later. Thanks again so much for tuning in. Bye. <laughs> I just remembered as I was cleaning up and putting pieces away, uh, I forgot to do acquisition. So there's a rule, uh, which I should have used, which actually would have helped a lot, is if you've got armor shooting at another armor unit and it misses, you can actually put an acquisition marker from your tank to that particular tank you were shooting at. That way, when you shoot at it again, you get a bonus to hit because you're like zeroing in on the rounds. So it's like if you shot but didn't cause a disruption or a reduction, your next shot, you get like a bonus to hit. And so I totally forgot about acquisition. Now, if I was to watch through this again, that may or may not have, have needed that because some units were constantly moving and basically in order for that acquisition to work is pretty much like nobody moves and then as soon as you shoot, you lose the acquisition. So it's a small bonus, but easily forgotten by me. All right, so I'll throw that out there for anybody who's looking for rules. All right, again, thanks for watching. Bye.